Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fantastic. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an animated play pause button in Figma. So what I will be attempting to create is a play button that changes shape when you actually click it. So it kind of morphs into uh, from uh, the play icon into the pause icon and vice versa. So that's kind of the target here. Um, let's try and figure out a way to create this in Figma. First of all, I'm going to create these two icons. So I'm going to take a, a polygon tool and create a triangle um, that's going to be black. And then I'm going to use two rectangles to create the pause, the pause icon. So here we have the two icons that are going to be morphing back and forth. I'm going to take a moment here to think about how specifically should the animation take place. What I suspect should be taking place here is Somehow you ha we have to combine this space between these two bars coming in closer together to kind of uh, the space to gradually disappear like this, right? So you would get both of these kind of moving in like this while at the same time uh, we should be somehow thinking about the way to create th these two cutouts. So you can see that we are starting to see two simple steps right here. First of all, close these two and then somehow make sure that this newly created square morphs into a triangle, which means these get cut off, right? You would get like um, this type of movement from here and from here, from like this. So let's try experimenting with a few animations and let's use the white color as for marking the space that's going to be actually transparent because we will probably be using the blend mode uh, multiply to uh, remove the white from uh, the icon. If we create a rectangle, a black rectangle like this, let's make sure it has the same height as this one, or uh, to be specific, let's set this one uh, to 200 and this one as well. Now I'm gonna uh, set this to black and then create uh, some more rectangles over here and here and these are gonna be white so completely white now I'm gonna create another rectangle that's gonna be white as well and this this one will be placed over this square if we consider the white parts to be transparent right now you basically have only two bars two black bars even though you have a full rectangle behind it actually but only what's only the final visual um, result is what matters here so we can go ahead with this one. The next step would be kind of gluing these together like this. I'm just gonna multiply these, duplicate these to create a backup. And um, let's just duplicate that again. And let's say that since this is a equilateral triangle, right? So a triangle that has all three sides uh, of the same length. So this is an equilateral triangle. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, uh, so all of the sides are the same length. This means that these angles, uh, these inner angles are 60 degrees. So to create a proper cover-up, this angle right here needs to be 60 degrees. Right now it's 90, right? It's uh, perpendicular. So to make this 60 degrees, we have to rotate that in this direction by 30 degrees. So why don't we just type in 30 or actually minus 30, right? So this is, this is the correct result. If we move it so that this point and this side of the rectangle meet precisely and here the same, 30 degrees, make sure it meets right here. If we remove this white rectangle, this is an, this should be an equilateral triangle, right? This should be an equilateral triangle. This is precise enough. I mean, um, it's not absolutely mathematically precise, but uh, our precision needs to be down to, let's say, uh, one hundredth of a pixel, which is perfectly enough in this case. So this means that uh, this is the before state and after state. And you want to animate, you, you want to somehow make sure that these animate between, uh, there is a smart animation between these two states. Um, also, this this rectangle right, right here needs to shrink down to zero. It needs to shrink down to zero. We can shrink it down to zero. I don't think that's possible. Yeah, Figma leaves us with only one, or um, so one is the smallest number possible. So why don't we try and set this to 0 0.001 pixel, right? So it's 
invisible, but it's still there. You managed to get it down to zero, basically. Right, so yes, this is the goal. How to make sure that these get animated? First of all, I'm gonna... I'm gonna select this and create a frame around it. So I'm gonna press Command Option G and then do the same here with one key adjustment. I'm gonna select both of these, press Enter and then make sure they are all constrained to right and center, right? That way, when we do this, you see what happens, right? This is the key point. So I'm gonna shrink it down to 200 and then 200 as well. We get a frame. It, this is a bit confusing to look at, but essentially all of this is inside this frame one that is currently be smaller than the contents. If we clip contents like this, we get the pause icon, right? But we're, we're gonna do the same here. So I'm gonna move it like this. Yeah, actually I'm gonna have to, gonna have to create a fill for this frame and then just move all of this so that this right edge of the hidden, uh, half hidden square is perfectly aligned with this right edge of the frame. And I will be doing that. So let's, let's see how many pixels are there. That's one, two, three, nine, 12. So 12 pixels, so that's 10, and then two, that's 12. This should be perfectly aligned now, let's see. Yeah, it is. And now I'm just gonna do this and... Right, so we get two frames. Both of them are 200 by 200, and both of them kind of contain the same elements arranged differently. Now, if we are to create an animated component from this, uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to make sure all of these layers are um, respect a naming convention. So the black rectangle that's gonna be called main rectangle, right? I'm I'm selecting both of these and pressing Shift uh, Command R to rename them. So main rectangle, right? You get two main rectangles. Then this top rectangle that's gonna be called top mask. This bottom one that's gonna be called both of these bottom mask. And then this middle rectangle that's gonna be called middle mask. So if you select this one and this one, they got the same name. That's our goal, that's what we are going for. And now we're gonna set the width to be basically zero, which means again, shrinking this down to one and then 0 0.001, right? So this middle mask should shrink down from 70 to zero. The next step, next thing we're gonna do is select both of these frame and select clip content. Then I'm gonna select these two, go here and say create component set. So I get a component with two variants, pause and play, and each of these, so both of these respect uh, a naming convention that's very, very important when you're animating in Figma. When you're working with smart animation, you have to keep the naming convention consistent, otherwise Figma won't understand what, trying, what you're trying to do. I'm gonna rename this component play pause animated button. I'm gonna do a few adjustments. And the first one is gonna be, I'm gonna move this middle mask to the approximate center of this new triangle, right? So I'm gonna move it around here. And now I'm gonna take all of these elements and move them so that this new triangle is in the middle or uh, looks to be kind of in the middle approximately, right? So about this looks good. Um, I'm gonna be removing the fill from these two frames, right? And I'm gonna use an instance of these of this play pause animated button. First, I'm gonna rename this uh, to say underscore content and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna use this then create an ellipse. I'm gonna paste that behind this instance. I'm gonna turn this to a black color and I'm gonna be reducing the opacity to 30. I will also at the same time have to swap these two colors. So this, this white that's gonna become black and this black that's gonna become white. So let's just swap it like this, awesome. So now the main parts are the white ones. And then I'm gonna select the instance of this component and go here to say screen, right? So only the white parts are now visible. Next thing, I'm gonna actually make this a little bit larger. So it's gonna be 530 pixels approximately, something like that. I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna change this property one to play. I'm gonna move it so that it looks balanced within the circle. 
I'm gonna now select both of these two, go to components and click create component set. Or actually, I'm gonna rename this uh, play button interactive, something like that, just so that we don't get this error. I don't get why this error is currently being shown, but uh, right, because we, right, yeah, I'm gonna have to redo this. So I'm gonna, I didn't group these two things, so I'm gonna group them now, right, group. And now I'm gonna create a component set, right? So we get, this is gonna be the play, pause, animated button. And we're gonna have a value called pause and play. Now I'm gonna select this one, go to prototype, click and drag over here, 150 milliseconds, smart animate, ease out. And same thing here, on click, change to property pause, smart animate, ease out, 150. Brilliant. Let's test this out. Let's use a frame. And to be fair, to make sure this really works, I'm gonna place this on, on, a, on top of an image. This will be 1000 by 600. Um, create an instance of this. I'm gonna shrink this way down to be, to be like 130 pixels. I'm gonna use an image that I used in one of my previous videos that I downloaded from pexels.com. I'm gonna blur this, or actually, I'm gonna blur this larger and paste that inside this frame below the play, pause, animated button. I'm gonna blur it. Let's blur it. Layer blur. And I'm gonna also move that so that we can, so that we can see the button. Right, so we just have some generic background. Um, and now let's test this out. So this is the result. We have a button, we can click it, and it neatly animates, morphs into a play button from a, a pause button into a play button like this. Right, so this is the final result. You can see that we get some, um, we get some tiny little lines here and there. That is probably done that is probably because of the scaling. But if we want to be really thorough, we can create a third state where this line through the play button will disappear. So I'm gonna duplicate this and say play corrected and we can set the prototype so that first of all, you cannot move from this state to this state, but um, I'm gonna connect it like this and say um, after on click change to property one, play correct it and it's gonna be not on click actually but after delay one millisecond so when you click this variant it's gonna move to this variant it's gonna wait a little and then gonna move over here why am i doing this uh, because in this variant we're gonna make sure that the middle mask has its opacity set to zero right which means in this step it's going to shrink and in this in this step it's going to disappear so this thing right here shouldn't appear anymore let's test that out right so you can see that it disappeared there is no line whatsoever and it's completely clean and thanks to using a blend mode called green we only show the white or we, we completely remove the black from, uh, from the layer group, from the component. And the final result being only the white parts show up. If we wanted to do the inverse of this, if, you want, if these were black, we would have to use blend mode called multiply, right? So multiply remo removes all white and screen removes all black. So this is the final result. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did and would like to see more similar stuff in the future, definitely leave a like and subscribe. And also, if you're interested in Figma, UX and UI design, go check out my channel. I do plenty of those. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.